Okay, next question. Oh, this is a nice one. Is Laura Trump as stupid as she appears to be? What is it that, that's stupid? Let me ask you that, sir or ma'am. I am, again, I say this all the time. I'm just giving you information and the facts. What is stupid is voting for a party that hates you and hates this country. What's stupid is voting for a party that ultimately wants the destruction of America. And I assume you are one of those people. Nothing stupid over here. I've actually done my research. I actually have the real information. I am actually not influenced by emotion, but cold, hard facts. You may want to get on that bandwagon because I'll tell you what, it's all sun sunshine, lollipops and rainbows now. But if something happens, you're going to look back and you're going to say, man, I bet Laura Trump was right. The former president's daughter-in-law, who was placed as co-chair of the RNC to make sure it runs for the sole purpose of helping Donald Trump, is claiming she's impartial and focused on facts. One day you're going to look back and say, Laura Trump was right. Unless it's about the point of Trump's hush money case, that is. Alvin Bragg himself refused to pro uh, prosecute this case until when? Until Donald Trump decided he was running for president. Everyone can see what this is about. So there they have and are forcing Donald Trump to sit in a, a courtroom. This is a former president of the United States, the current nominee for the Republican side of the aisle for president for weeks on end. For what, Sean? They claim a bookkeeping error, really? And to recoup $130,000. Strike one on Laura's opposition to emotion and commitment to cold, hard facts. Because the Stormy Daniels case isn't about recouping $130,000. It's about the illegal campaign contributions he dealt in to pay the hush money as part of his election interference scheme. You know, you can keep supporters against the charges as long as they have no idea what the charges are. You know, I also wonder, where were the Trumps when Michael Cohen was getting convicted for his part in breaking the law to cover up Trump's dealings. There was no word from them about a weaponized justice system when he was going down for it. I'm sitting here for days now, from morning till night, in that freezing room, freezing. Everybody was freezing in there. And all for this, and this is your result. Look at that, each one of them a story. And it's very unfair, very bad thing. Very bad thing. The whole world is watching this hoax. You got a DA that's out of control. You have a judge that's highly conflicted. The whole thing is a mess. And you have the leading candidate and leading crooked Joe Biden by line. He's the one that should be in trial. He's a crook. You got a crooked president. I really do think he's running out of things to whine about. Remember when he surrendered to authorities and took that mugshot? They complained about the conditions of the facility that he had to visit, as if countless people hadn't gone through the same situation for their alleged crimes. But it's only important to highlight the problems with dirty buildings and freezing rooms when someone more important than his January 6th culprits has to deal with them. Greg crosses the Rubicon, indicting Trump on nonsense. The whopping outrage in Trump's indictment. It's a whopping outrage and it is an outrage. Everybody's outraged by it. You know, we had 18 DA or DA types or clubs, 18 or 19 or 21, they counted all their in and out like And in the meantime, we have murders going on right outside in New York. If Trump's legal team spent more time crafting a defense to these trumped up charges than they do printing out opinion articles defending him, they might have a little bit of a chance. But what they can't get past is the audacity of the American judicial system to treat him the same way that they treat anyone else that's facing damn near 90 charges from all over the country. He expects to be above the law so much, they don't know how un-American they sound with these excuses. We don't do this in America. We don't go after the office of the president with, with porn star cases. We give a, a broad mm -hmm. swath of latitude. And if you're an ex-president and you murdered somebody, I get it, or been accused of murder. But, but what is this? This hurts the American brand. I keep saying that. I was in Geneva last week, 150 countries represented there. Everybody's talking about this saying, what is this porn star thing? Like, this is an American president. This is the office of the United States of America's highest office. And we're doing this? This is sheer stupidity. The gag order is unconstitutional. You cannot prevent the defendant from attacking the witnesses, from attacking the judge's daughter, if the judge's daughter could be a basis for disqualification.